Seances have been used in the past and the present to contact spirits from beyond the veil of death. But between the years of 1972 and 1974, the Toronto Society of Psychic Research conducted a series of seance-style experiments that put the entire history of ghosts and mediums under a strange new light. The group that conducted these meetings had a particular goal in mind, to make contact with a man named Philip Aylesford. Philip was an Englishman from the time of Oliver Cromwell, and he was married to a woman who, although beautiful, was as cold as a polar wind. He had married her as an arrangement, but his heart belonged to a gypsy girl, Margot, that he had met at the boundaries of his estate. He brought her to live secretly near the manor, but when his wife discovered this, the gypsy girl was accused of witchcraft and burned at the stake. Shortly afterwards, Philip took his own life, throwing himself from the battlements. The group were looking for a communication or some kind of visual manifestation from Philip. In uh, September, they got around, they, got, they basically got together and held somewhat, something like a seance, I guess you could call it. Come on, let's get going. However, even after a whole year of these meetings, there were no results. So they changed their approach, adopting a Victorian seance setting. I think two or three sessions after we started, we heard this noise in the table which sounded like a, a rap. It wasn't long before more dramatic communication was established. In the world of the paranormal, it sounds like a very ordinary case, and similar results have been achieved using alternate seances, divine rituals, and Ouija boards. What makes the Philip case so unique is that Philip himself never existed. But Philip is an imaginary ghost. Philip wasn't real. We created him. A piece of fiction brought to life. The Toronto Society of Psychical Research initially had one goal in mind, to attempt to create a group hallucination. In order to do this, they collected several people who, although interested in parapsychology, had no previous psychic experiences or abilities. They got together and invented a character history for a man named Philip. In creating a character, they wanted to put in historical inaccuracies to ensure that if they did in fact meet their ghost that they'd created and were able to communicate with him, that they would get information that they would know is historically inaccurate and thus know that it's their own creation that they're speaking to. In a sense, they had created a haunting. Hello, Philip. Are you there? Good morning, Philip. Good morning, Philip. Hi, Philip. Philip had been created by the group's collective consciousness, and this was evident in his limitations. If they tried to tell something that was inaccurate as to their story, the ghost wouldn't respond. Some thought that Philip was another entity that had latched onto the desires of the group, while others suggested a tulpa, a thought manifestation that in the past has been created through highly advanced yoga practices. Well, you know, you can theorize. Uh, it could be some sort of energy we all have within us um, that allows us to perform psychokinesis. To those with an open mind, these experiments are fascinating in that they simultaneously cast doubt on the existence of ghosts, while supplying new evidence for collective knowledge in psychokinesis. Perhaps the powers of the mind stretch far beyond the capabilities of the brain, and we have access to energies and abilities that we all but ignore these days. But what of Philip himself? Does he exist somewhere in a form that we can't understand? Or was he just a medium for a new way of thinking? Thank you.